Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8. In this episode, I currently have no idea what I'm doing. Let me see what I'm doing. I probably have some missions already underway to Duna, I feel like. Or did we get all those done? Hello Kerbling Smasher. I have to remember what I what the heck I was doing last time. We've already got the Sentinel Telescope up. I guess we, we're basically starting fresh. Anyway, let's see what we've got that's new. I don't want to do Ike again. You've done enough Ike. You know, res rescuing Lannan from orbit of Kerbin, we could do with a space plane. Just for fun. I mean, I guess we could call that a warm-up back. I mean, it's not a really big deal. Or, uh, we could... Oh, 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 no, no, I know now. I know, I know what's going on. Oh, God. <laughs> I know now. I remember. I know why I forgot, too. It's because I blocked it out. It was too traumatic. We had passed the space plane. I knew it was a space plane thing. We had passed the space plane through the atmosphere of Eve. And its current state is... I knew, I knew we had something pending. It's nagging on me. But... I had, uh, I blocked it out because we had passed through the atmosphere of Eve with Jeb and Bill and now they're running out of electric charge and they look like this. Uh, the plane ripped apart in the atmosphere of Eve and we have to rescue these guys. So, <laughs> that's always fun. Let's not focus on them otherwise they'll totally run up. Not that they die from running out of electric charge or anything and it is still a rescue so they're gonna have to EVA out probably. Uh, but back to Space Center. It's not like they're gonna do anything. So, running out of electric charge is not a big deal. Oh no indeed, yeah. Well, at least they didn't die. That was a close call. And hello, Mr. Doobie. At least they didn't die. But basically, they're gonna end up in a interstellar orbit. Interplanetary orbit, not interstellar. That would be really hard. Um, so they're gonna end up in an orbit like uh, that. So, what I need to do is calculate the phase angle to that because, well, even curved alarm clock or anything like that would not help. Wikipedia, you don't have the right phase angle. You have all the other phase angles. I need the approximation to calculate this. I have it written down, but I haven't got my notebook with me. They're not really giving me the equation I'm used to. <laughs> Brute force it through enough boosters? Yeah, but I don't want to. I want to keep it elegant. Okay, it's three point... It doesn't sound right. I don't think this is the right thing. 215 degrees? At least that is backwards. So that would be 200 and... I mean, it'd be 144 degrees. Does that make sense? A 144 degree gap? Hmm. It's possible. Because, uh, well, Eve is only 54 degrees, though. Oh, well. I guess we will brute force it, <laughs> more or less. We'll go with the 144 degree estimate and work from there. I'm using Kerbalism in my YouTube series, uh, the Mars Colonization series. But it's the sort of RO compatible version of Kerbalism, so it uh, doesn't have all the features working yet. We will not send another Kerbal <laughs> to rescue them, or should we send another Kerbal? It's, it, I mean, we're going into an inner orbit, so communication should not be a problem. It's not like to Drez or anything. Yeah, so uh, in the Mars Colonization series, it's handling the radiation comfort food oxygen. What The only thing that's sort of disabled is the random failure part. So if you'd like to see me using Kerbalism and Realism Overhaul, that's, that's what that series is about. Okay, Rescue 3M or 3D should be about right. Got big, a big dish. Got the main seal at the bottom. And that should be enough Delta B. 
let's just not send any Kerbals. We'll go pure remote control with this. The cheat is a bit powerful, but I guess we can deal. Now, we're gonna have to wait until the phase angle is right. Let me check. At the very least, we know that the target mission has to be behind Kerbin, because it's on an inner orbit. I should have probably done, at least done the science, which may still be in the bay. While we were at Eve. I'll call that close enough, we'll see. Well, I mean, even as it is, the phase angle is a total estimate because we're not accounting for the eccentricity of the orbit, so. It's not to match, I mean, it's, uh, I'm talking about to calculate the phase angle given that eccentricity is uh, dodgy business, so it's always an estimate. The normal calculations for home and transfer, unless you've got a pork chop plot, assume that the orbit is circular. So. Matching the orbit is not a problem. I think. Okay, go. Pork chop plot. Um, the typical uh, shape it makes reminds people of pork chops. If it's a really weirder target, it's not going to look much like a pork chop, but... You thought it was something sophisticated when they call it a pork chop plot? <laughs> Sound disappointed. Uh, I should have just deorbited at that stage. Gosh. Let's see. Uh, that doesn't look right at all. <laughs> okay, this was definitely the wrong time, but... Fortunately, in stock, we can just hang out. Alright, well, that, that'll have to be close enough. Uh, we got 1,200 meters per second there. We have enough Delta V. Well, we have to come back to Kerbin somehow, though. So we'll do a correction here. That'll get us closer. No, we'll sort out that and we can't because we've lost communication temporarily. We'll sort that out when we get there. Note in only 36 minutes? I thought I pressed that plus thing quite a lot of times. How can it be only in 36 minutes? I thought we were like waiting a huge amount of time before exiting. What the heck does our exit trajectory look like? Oh, well, that's sort of unexpected. Okay, I guess that's how it is. That's not a close intercept yet. I mean... You're, you're tempting me here to tweak this until I get it within a few meters or something. Oh, well, somewhere in there was five kilometers, so... Anyway, you get the picture. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend all the time doing that. Um... Besides, a burn is gonna be so far off what we plotted. I mean, far enough that it's gonna have to be corrected anyway. Oh. Big communication lines going elsewhere, but unfortunately our relay satellite is on the opposite side of Kerbin right now. And this site, we're probably not going to pick up in time. Just one relay right now, yeah. Do we have others around the moon? And Minmus. We'll delay this by an orbit, maybe. If I, but once I get communication, I'll... Now we get communication. No, I'll, I'll, I'll delay it. See, this why I shouldn't have plotted that other thing. Well... We're at the start of our burn, we should be communicating through the KSC. That Those lines aren't going to be helpful right there. Hmm, we may lose communication in the midst of this burn, that's no good. I 
And we gotta wait a couple more orbits. So that we can get that satellite over us. No, it's not... Oh, oh, uh, that was a failed res probe. It doesn't have enough communications. They already passed by Drez. Other options is to have uh, Minmus or the Moon help with the relay stuff, but... Maybe this will be alright. This will be alright, because we've got the KSC over here now. Okay, four, three, two, one, go. Well, it's weird that, um, you know, we have to get like the highest communication technology to communicate with Drez, but there we are. I wish this probe core had like hold to node at least. We are uh, heading out of Kerbin, yes, uh, to rescue Jeb and Bill stranded in interplanetary orbit in a broken down space plane. We tried to air break a space plane in EVE atmosphere and it broke apart, but thankfully Jeb and Bill remained alive. But they're in a rather broken up plane. And we need to rescue them because they lost their engines and everything. In a way, it's sort of a lucky sort of thing. Could have been worse. Yep. This is this is exactly what Kerbal was meant to be. So we'll take 200 to get there, 1,282 to meet up with them, and then we have to hopefully have enough fuel to get back to Kerbin after that. Of course, Kerbin can slow us down on the Kerbin side, but still, it's a trick. I'm not sure about this. Do we have enough fuel? I don't know. Well, 7.4 kilometers should be as good as we need. Okay. Off we go. Oh, 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 watch out for electric charge. Oh, we're in Kerbin nighttime. Hey, that can't be obscuring the sun. That's cheats. We can totally see this. <laughs> Come on. Singularity surrounded by a collision mesh. Oh, yeah, there can be all sorts of weird graphical glitches if it's not set up exactly right. I think I've had that one before. I don't remember why, though. Since we're doing random interplanetary encounters, maybe I should eventually work on the whole business of... Um, let's get it a little bit better than that. Um, asteroids. Asteroid manipulation. Okay, 12 kilometers is fine. Okay, let's make sure we're oriented well with the sun. That should be okay if we like that. 2,170 and we need 1,200 to match orbits with it. So are they gonna trade uh, one ship that's out of fuel for, an well, out of Delta V for another ship that's out of Delta V? Or are we actually gonna be able to bring them back home? Okay. Should be coming up from behind us. We can have that hold retrograde like that. Boy, this thing doesn't really accelerate much. I. Oh, right, I had to throw it down. There we go. I want to see that the separation isn't increasing too much. If it does, then I'll throttle down and wait a bit. If the time... Oh, what? What happened? What just happened? It's our target. Why aren't we getting a read on it? Oh, there we go. Jeez. I don't want the time to go up either. Oh, see. It went up. I'm gonna throttle down. But 
You're supposed to keep showing me the intercept. I have to hover over it now to get the intercept? No, no. Well, I guess hovering over it doesn't really work either. Why does it have to frustrate me so? Um, thrust limit allows me to use the rest of the throttle. So if I thrust limit it to 10%, say, that means that the top of the throttle range is 10% and the bottom range, uh, of course. So if I set to medium throttle, it'll be 5%. And so it's much more fine tuned. So I can make finer adjustments. So we could see it now, I think. Yeah. There it is. 867 meters per second left. If I had a docking port on this, I could probably suck fuel from that. That would have been a good idea, but... Well, didn't think about that. Because that does have a docking port in the cargo bay. Could have gotten refueled. Alright. We can park here. All right, you two. Two jokers. We've done the EVA in the middle space and all that business already, so. All right. Let go, RCS. Technically, Jeb should be second, but whatever. Oh, come on, Jeb. I know you've been waiting in space for a while, but please. We could go with a more advanced space plane, I feel. One that won't need to attempt to air brake around things. This definitely benefits to scaling up sometimes. But then refueling, it's gonna be a pain. It's already taking the largest rocket we have used in the series just to refuel this one. Okay, so can we get back to Kerbin with 857 meters per second? Well... Kerbin's in front of us, that's correct. This would be a good time to make that transfer. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe we had enough to manually capture? Is that what you're saying? Gosh darn it, we have like 9 meters per second less than what we need. Uh, well, I'm not going to send another rescue out. They're just going to have to wait a long time. That's still pretty tight, but that'll do it. Three years? Well, we got to make sure it actually actually happens. 800 meters per second. It seems tight though. Can we get with less? Well, I don't know. I want them back, so we'll give it a go. Let's go to the tracking station for time warping purposes. This was a very long mission for Jeb and Bill. I mean, I guess if... Uh, if Elon really believes that the universe is a simulation, then at least a cyber truck won't cause much lag. So there's that. Okay, well, let's see how close we're getting. It took many years. <laughs> That's, uh, this is a good time to thrust limit now. All right, we have our approach. Skilled. Skilled would have been realizing that I didn't have enough Delta V in the first place, so we didn't have to wait all these years. Okay, uh, back to the mission. 
Jeb should totally be looking like Tom Hanks in that one movie. Castaway? Castaway. Fall 13 wasn't nearly that... I didn't actually watch Catchaway, I, no, Castaway, I just uh, watched uh, clips. Fall 13, that's only 8 days, come on. Even Jim Lovell had been in space for longer and in more dire circumstances in Gemini. <laughs> uh, anytime you're trapped in a Gemini spacecraft with Frank Borman for 14 days. Okay, well, that's my planned periapsis. And yeah, I, and it didn't have the sort of environmental cleaning apparatus that... Uh, and I think some of the systems broke down during that time, too. I mean, they didn't have the CO2 problem, sure, but they couldn't shave on Gemini. Frank Borman is really, really uptight. And by all accounts, he was complaining about going home like by day 8. They got along alright, I mean, it wasn't uh, the worst thing, but... Definitely different personalities. But yeah, I mean, there, um, Gemini had issues. <laughs> the environmental systems were not good. You can shave, uh, you can shave on uh, Apollo, normally. I mean, Apollo 13 probably they couldn't, but uh, you could do all sorts of things, grooming and hygiene in Apollo that you couldn't do in Gemini. Just imagine in that tiny space trying to go to the bathroom, if you will. Who's see your sports car for two weeks? Basically. We'll just call it a Tesla Roadster. I mean, let's 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 be specific. I can barely I mean size wise it's about I mean, because I probably couldn't fit in a Tesla Roadster any better I could fit it into a Gemini capsule. I'm six foot. So I'm right at the end there. Put a urine collection device in Cybertruck? Um... It might be a little painful to use because of all the edges. Given that it'd have to be low polygon too. Thanks for following your, uh, Neuron Basher. Well, actually, uh... Uh, for a lot of purposes, you want it to um, have some give. Though, there's a reason why windshields actually do sort of shatter a bit. They, they don't break, they shatter in order to observe, uh, absorb the shock. So it's actually a good thing. Like, even the shuttle windshields were designed to shatter like that without breaking. Rigid often means brittle, that's right. DeLorean? Yeah. DeLorean crossed with an Aztec. Don't insult the DeLorean like that. Honestly, the DeLorean looks great. The DeLorean, the shape of the DeLorean is really nice. For it for its time, you know, they, they were always box boxy back then. The DeLorean was you know, it, it isn't this. I I also sort of don't get the whole thing where Elon thinks he's discovered stainless steel. But okay. I'm sure they've got a good deal on the steel and everything, but... Rockets have been made of stainless steel before. <laughs> it's not It's not that unusual. I think Centaur still is, if I recall correctly. In the rocket, we had to rescue uh, Jeb and Bill, but now we can move on to other things. I think... Let's see what planets are up. These are all things we've already done. That keeps telling us to do. Um, honestly, the next transfer window is to Duna again. 